All right, welcome back to Taxed and Wasted by the Australian Taxpayers Alliance. This is still part of our COVID break uh, series where we try to touch all the information, all the news from around the world that has little to do with coronavirus. Although I'm gonna break my own rule really quick and I'm sorry, but there's important news coming out of the ATA and I have to touch it. Uh, we have put out yesterday our post COVID-19 Australia plan. This is a five point plan. And it's really what we think is the best way to get Australia back on track, not only to see a speedy and strong recovery uh, for the economy, but also uh, so that we're better than ever. So that all of the, the, all of the amendments, let's say, all of the reforms that should have been done a long time ago will be put in place. Uh, I'm gonna go through them really quickly. Our policy director, Emily Dye, yesterday on Facebook and on YouTube put out a video explaining the, the plan a lot better than I will, but I'm just gonna run through the five points, which are deregulation, decentralization of power, uh, uh, reform on taxes, uh, making sure that we boost the domestic economy, and putting the power of superannuation back in the hands of the people. Now again, that was just me running through the plan. I really encourage you to go to our YouTube page, to our Facebook page, and see what uh, what Emily has to say about it there. Oh, and I forgot to mention, for everyone uh, listening through the podcasting app, this is actually the first video version of the podcast, which is exciting. We'll be we'll be improving it little by little, uh, but I think it's a pretty good start uh, considering considering the considering it's the first time. I'm going to get back to Corona break now and uh, completely just annihilate all coronavirus talk, and we're going to start with an ASIO bill. So this is obviously made. Big news all around Australia because ASIO uh, has a bill which uh, which is now uh, in Parliament, and the reforms are problematic. A word I hate, but they are problematic. Basically, this expands the power of ASIO in a way that can really have some nefarious consequences. So, the one that stood out the most to a lot of people was ASIO being able to question kids as young as fourteen. Another issue is being able to put tracking devices on people or on people's property uh, without having to get a warrant, so without the need for a warrant. And lastly, would be loosening people's right to have a lawyer present during an interrogation. And all these are really problematic, uh, again, a word that I hate, but it's appropriate here, for their own reasons. So for example, uh, questioning kids as young as 14. Well, there's a problem with questioning kids. There is, because kids don't really have the cognitive abilities of adults. And so when you're questioning a child in order to get some kind of evidence, ostensibly to, to use in some kind of criminal proceeding, uh, you don't know that you're getting the best information. And in fact, whoever is interrogating them has a lot of tools at their disposal that wouldn't work with an adult to get them to say what is best for their own case, for their prosecution, or whatever it may be. So there's really no real good reason to be questioning uh, children for ASIO to be questioning kids um, that are so young. So that's the first part. And the second part, I'll, I'll get to the tracking after this one, but the second part is loosening people's right to have a lawyer present during an interrogation. Now this is actually pretty standard across the free world. If you're going to be interrogated by police, you have the right to have a person there representing you who knows the law. Now if you can't have a person there, there can be several consequences, but I'll give you one you can get into what's called a perjury trap. So let's say someone is questioning you for the better part of an hour, and they're asking you very, very specific questions, and they're asking you questions in kind of an odd order, and it's a very hostile thing, and the person who is answering these questions may not be across the, the, legal, um, the legal rights or the legal consequences of what they're saying, and if anything in their, in their line of questioning contradicts, uh, contradicts itself internally, that's lying to an authority. And that, that can be a punishable offense. Now, with a lawyer present, they would be able to steer you in the right direction. With this, not the case. So that could actually be really uh, a bad consequence to people being questioned by ASIO, people who haven't been determined to be guilty in any way yet. Uh, and then finally, obviously, this is the most egregious one just on the face of it, which would be putting tracking devices on people without a warrant. So if someone could go ahead and put a tracking device on your car or on in your purse or whatever without really needing to get a warrant for it. And they call it a non-intrusive uh, tracking device, which 
I don't think there's I don't think there's such a thing as a secret tracking device that's not intrusive, but obviously that's just really bad. So so we'll we'll uh, we'll keep on this story for a while, but just on the face of it, it's it's really terrible. Uh, really quick, I want to touch on Virgin Australia, which is an issue that I like to talk about a lot, uh, because. For some reason, there's still talk of government bailouts and, and even government um, purchasing of Virgin Australia. But there's news today, which is interesting, I think, that is Deloitte. Deloitte is a, a big uh, company that does uh, consulting in the United States. Delo it's worldwide, but it's, a, it's an American company. They've reduced the list of possible buyers from 20 to 4. So now we have the four most likely buyers of Virgin Australia, and Virgin is going to be basically making the pitch to those four buyers. Uh, good. That means us. Virgin Australia does in fact have some kind of. It serves a purpose. The infrastructure is worth something, and as is expected, the private market came in to purchase it. No need for the government to uh, step in to give them some of our money, the money that we give to the government, uh, not willingly necessarily all the time. Uh, but here's the issue: Queensland is continuing to say that they're going to put two hundred million dollars towards buying a part of Virgin Australia. Which seems ridiculous. You already have private industry with private money, with their own money, stepping in to purchase it. So why on earth would Queensland continue to want to buy it? Now, they're offering $200 million to buy a part of it because Virgin Australia has about $6.4 billion in assets. So they, they couldn't buy Virgin Australia even if they wanted to. Uh, but it's, it's very bizarre. Hopefully, Queensland will... Uh, drop this uh, cause and uh, and you know Virgin Australia will, will continue afloat or they'll be absorbed whatever I don't really care I just don't want my money <laughs> paying for uh, paying for it uh, and finally we're just going to touch on the United States really quick because the US today released its first new military flag in 72 years uh, and that's for Space Force which I think is really cool now we're gonna we're gonna cut in uh, the recruitment video for Space Force, and uh, yeah, it's not that relevant to Australia, but I think it's really cool, so here it is. Some people look to the stars and ask, what if? Our job is to have an answer. We have to imagine what will be imagined. Plan for what's possible, while it's still impossible. Maybe you weren't put here just to ask the questions. Maybe you were put here to be the answer. Maybe your purpose on this planet isn't on this planet. Yeah, again, as I say, really cool. I want to join Space Force. I can't because my arms are so uh, weak. I'm sure they, they have no need for me, although it's zero gravity, so maybe they will. And uh, just really quickly, uh, this is an interesting story. The Justice Department might be... Uh, lodging an antitrust lawsuit against Alphabet Inc., so against Google. And this was a report uh, obtained by the Washington Post that claims that the Justice Department will be seeking uh, to sue Google for using the quasi-monopoly that they have on the uh, digital advertising space to suppress companies that could compete with them directly. And uh, this, this would be huge if this goes through, because obviously um, Google uh, makes most of its money through advertising. Uh, it has revolutionized the, the world of advertising, the way in which people get products, the ways in which businesses uh, get their products in front of the appropriate consumers. So an antitrust uh, lawsuit could actually result in, in a completely cataclysmic change to, to, to all of us because it would have severe ramifications, good or bad, that's yet to be seen. But we could see uh, the, the advertising so a bit of raw editing there. Sorry, there was some background noise. Uh, but basically, yeah, if, if Google uh, loses this lawsuit, which uh, is probably going to be, to be filed, then that means that potentially the advertising uh, part of the business may be separated by force from the rest of Alphabet. And that would be a big, big story. Uh, and that, my friends, is all that, uh, all that we have time for this week. I hope that you enjoyed the video version of the podcast. If you're listening to it, jump on YouTube, jump on Facebook, and, uh, and check out the video podcast and give us any comments that you may have. Thank you very much, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time.